everyone, Wes is over there unloading. Oh, I had to bring slips to the office. So I, every week we have to bring them. I should have a better system. Every week we need to bring slips from last week before Wednesday if you want to get paid for it. Here's a funny little thing. Uh, do you think Mark, uh, the truck driver, is good at arts and crafts? I'm assuming he left the sea out because there wasn't enough room. I walked the processor up through here and uh, we pile from behind. There's no gravel here. Um, there's no gravel here, so if we tried forwarding or mostly forwarding right in here and it rained, it would just all turn to would just turn to slaw like this this is all dried out we got rain on sunday a little bit over the weekend but this was wicked sloppy so by piling from behind i've had a few comments here and there talking about how oh those are messy piles you should pile them neater well you can't pile them neat if you're piling from behind the pile to the road where the truck's going to be otherwise you can a little bit with logs, but with pulp or odd link stuff, you can't because if you tapped it out, then you might get long stuff that's um, sticking out and would get in the way of the truck. The other cool thing was Friday, I uh, went up to uh, Tiger Cat, Frank Martin's and son is our dealer in Maine, and I stopped at Heavy Machines first because I wanted to get another hydraulic uh, oil sample, and I think I've talked about that. It's been well over a month, a couple months, been quite a while. And I never got the results back because this has quite a few hours on it. It's got 17,000 hours or so. And I had it tested um, before I bought it, and it was good. And I just was, you know, not worrying but concerned making sure everything was still good and I, I so I so I sent the sample in and I never got anything in the mail or email or anything so I stopped at heavy machines and I that's another it's like the link belt Rotney dealer and I got one there and then I it's in the same town pretty much where the other tire cat dealer is so I said oh what what the heck I'll go up there and get a test from there too and i'm going to send two in just to make sure i just like to do my due diligence and if i test it and it comes back all all good then then you know it should indicate that nothing's nothing's going on inside the pumps or anything that would make you think you needed to do something uh so i went up there and while i was at tire cat um that's frog um the store manager chris uh was on the phone he, he heard what i was talking about and said hey just wait a minute and he knew that since i bought the tiger cat um hydraulic sample or whoever they buy it from if if they had they may have it in their system so so at any rate he I think the service manager there, whatever, got on his computer, it was right there. So all this time I've been thinking they didn't send it or didn't do it, and um, turns out it they had it all done. And uh, lo and behold, uh, you know, I wouldn't say there's nothing to worry about, but the test came back and it was all good. There was not all the levels of, you know, they test a bunch of different stuff, irons and, I don't know to, to see if there's brass or metal or whatever else contaminants that uh, might be getting in the system if you had a pump going or something so all those levels were really good so what I'm gonna do now now that I've had see a lot of times I don't know who and I'm tight walking here in this this was all you know, oops. Now I'm using the toggle now, so this was all fairly dry. 
um, before that we got, we got about an inch of rain over the weekend. Um, I don't know who Larry, the guy I bought it from, I don't know what test he used or who he used it with. Now that I've had a test done um, through TireCat, I, I might start doing it every six months, we'll say, or at least once a year. At least once a year, if I start putting more hours on it for some reason, we'll do it twice a year. And that way, they have all that. So they'll have uh, the test from this time in the system so they can see a trend. You know, if it's good, 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 and then something's bumping up or something, it might indicate that you're it might indicate that you're have you might want to do something with your pump or something's going on so that was kind of kind of made me feel i think better that i you know that i wasn't being complacent and uh so anyways yesterday we did that log we went to the mill and uh kind of back lumber and uh they left the load that Mark hauled there on, I think it was Friday, um, all laid out like they were going to scale it. And uh, the scaler that works there and the guy that was here, the wood buyer that was here, he's also a scaler, but he, he, all he does is buy wood now. And Mike was there. So we got to watch all, every log on a whole load get scaled. It was pretty neat. I really wished I, and I would have loved to have done a video there. I just don't know that it was the right time. I'm hoping maybe that um, sometime in the future here, and I don't know if it'll be at the mill, but sometime in the future where I can do a video with them on scaling and how they're grading stuff and because it, it was pretty darn informational i know wes got a lot from it and i'm really noticing it um today and yesterday just looking you know i'm the one that's ultimately cutting the logs but just kind of understanding a little more of the grades and stuff and i it's not I, I knew logs fairly well but definitely not as as uh good as them and just kind of understanding that uh, uh even a subtlety one way or the other will change the grade of the log either to a better grade or there from a saw log to a pallet log which we really don't make out on there because they're just going to resell it to the same mill that we would send it to anyways but and the only other thing you know that was i guess he didn't sort of realize or maybe it was complacency is that you know for those of you who are in the woods business every log you gives trim typically all my presets on my machine are set at you know you give a six inch trim on a log and you know if it was happened to run a little short eight two eight three maybe even eight four i didn't really put much thought into it because i said well you know what the heck it's uh they're just going to trim it down to an eight inch board anyways turns out not the case um i saw a handful of my logs that that would have been a good saw log that because it was eight three got kicked into pallet because they sell their lumber eight four it's got trim on it and i i had no idea i never knew that so there was that and then there was i guess in the white birch to be a veneer it's got to be I, I think it's got to be even longer. I think it's got to be at least uh, I, uh, eight, six, eight, nine, or something like that. And there was a few white birch logs that, not many, but that they were still a saw log, 
but it would have been a veneer um, white birch log if I had cut them a little longer. So, and some of the logs that were, you know, like a 10 or a nine with six inches of trim that had some defect on one of the ends, they could trim it back to the, you know, like if it was a 10 to an eight or a nine, take some deduction and keep it in a saw log grade where if, um, make sure I'm walking back to the processor, where if they only went by the top, it would kick it into a pallet. So what I find myself a little bit doing now that I've had that kind of, let's say, course on logs is I'm, if there's a log that I think will be a saw log, um, but I'm not quite sure, and I was gonna cut an eight foot or something, or I'll, I'll if I can cut it a little longer, I will to give them some leeway to see if they can do anything with it. Um, so there's more to it than that, what I'm looking at, but it's basically just not pigeonholing myself to making them have to call it a pallet or something like that. And there's other things I'm looking at that I saw them grading that are more subtle. Um, that would make a saw log into a pallet or 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 into a lower grade um, that I can just cut the logs a little different trim them up a little differently just to make a better product for them which really isn't a whole lot more work for me it's just knowing what's there so. anyways uh, That was uh, that. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody had a good Memorial Day, good long weekend. And I think what I'm going to try to do now, we'll see how it goes. Having this gyro stick in the GoPro, and I bought a, a much bigger SD card so I can get more video on one SD card. Um, I'm going to... You know, this is uh, Wednesday now. I'm going to do more filming during the week. And it's always hard for me to be consistent with the videos if I'm filming, editing, and trying to upload them the same day. Um, so I'm trying to get a little more film during the week. And then not worry about editing them till the weekend today there's not much editing because it's just sort of you know, walk and talk or whatever you want to call it just kind of letting you guys know what's going on so picking up some new subscribers so i appreciate all that and you know, like subscribe definitely comment i always like hearing from people and and hit that subscribe and that notification button if you enjoy it and let me know how everybody's doing we're back at the processor i left the door open so it wouldn't be a sauna in there um so i hope you all are well like subscribe comment we'll catch you later well it's the end of the day it's about four o'clock shut the master switch off here Wes is unloading his last little bit of uh, logs. I need to get home. Timber's uh, been home all day by himself. My parents have gone camping, so there's nobody to pick them up and bring them home. So the other thing was is now that um, I don't have to worry about the pump for now. I'm thinking about uh, doing this bearing. It's got some decent play in it. I don't think they're supposed to have much. So I can clean you guys off. Um, loaded a few spruce logs. 
Um, I don't think it's supposed to have much play and it's got some decent um, play in it. Uh, when I was up to Caterpillar the other day, I got a price of this. It was five thousand dollars for that bear. I picked up another set of new teeth. These are good for right now. Um, these are those husky teeth. They hold up pretty well. Um, they seem to take rocks. Um, these are the teeth from last winter that I demoed. They seem to handle hitting rocks better than the quadco teeth. I don't know if they're harder, um, but they don't blow right apart. They seem to keep, they seem to keep their shape a little better. Um, so I I can I've got one more. I can rotate them one more time, and then I'll put a new set on. I bought a set while I was there, so I guess I'm trying. I'm gonna try one more. Valentines, or yeah, I think they're Valentines. They're the same beaver tooth shape, so I'll try the Quadcos, the Huskies, and the Valentines. I'll just kind of see which ones I like the best. They're all the same. Well, you know, a little different price, but I'll probably end up running the buncher here. I don't know if I will this week, but next week I've got, I counted this morning, I had 12 more trails to. 10 or 12 more trails to process and I think uh, that would be maybe like 14 or 15 more trails for west and then I've got to finish kind of if you picture the piece this side which is not quite as consistently wooded 